Hello there, uh, Josh here. Um, in this video, uh, in what is kind of Tracker Tuesday post, um, I am going to talk about hot form uh, briefly, hopefully, succinctly. Um, and we'll just try to talk through the sorts of things I do, I look at, um, uh, and how I use horse race base to research historical uh, results and various other things um, and also how I kind of use Gigi's um, live uh, in play kind of racing on the day um, although they've got various other reports as well um, so just to touch on uh, I suppose it may be best actually if to illustrate what I mean by hot form to start with Gigi so um, this was a race on Newmarket on Sunday I'm recording this on Tuesday the 9th of June, um, a three-year-old only handicap, uh, plenty informed, plenty lightly raced, global storm actually, along with a uh, native tribe, I think, qualified um, on the stats angles. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I looked at both, I looked at the race and thought, oh, this looks rather competitive uh, and kind of taught myself out. Global storm was 10 to 1 in the morning, but um, dragging myself over hot coals with a three-year-old handicap uh, isn't something I want to get in the habit of doing. Uh, they are tricky races by their nature, but that isn't the purpose of these particular ramblings. What I wanted to in, uh, demonstrate, I suppose, um, and I saw this on the kind of Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon when I was looking, uh, is that idea of hot form. And what I want to talk about is this then what feature to the right, which kind of helps explain it. Here we're trying to identify horses who have run in races that have produced subsequent subsequent winners, uh, whether in and around them or behind them or whatever. Um, firstly, indicating that the race was strong and that it either had a lot of in-form horses or horses that were coming into form. And when we're obviously dealing with handicaps or looking at the progress of such horses from such races, uh, indicating that the horse we may be looking at now could be much better than their handicap mark, may be well handicapped. And of course, they may be running in a race today, which isn't as competitive as that hot form race. So I'll show what I kind of how I use horse race base to try and identify some of those for the future so that they come up within my kind of uh, qualifiers box um, so I can latch onto them early uh, in a day knowing already and having information about the level of form achieved. Um, using Gigi's you can kind of see here when you're trying to build up a picture of a race to work out yeah the competition, the level of competition the horse has faced, uh, how the races have worked that out, what does that tell us about this horse now in the context of this race and their future, uh, the level of ability they could achieve um, and in my my mind hot form is one of those elements I look at and I like to be homing in on horses that are running races that have worked out well um, so that we can have some handle on how good they are and the level of competition faced of course that's one part of a puzzle that you can add into ratings here we've got top speed racing post ratings speed figures if you use them uh, and then of course you've got other analysis such as trainer form uh, looking at the pace looking at other horses in the race evaluating those at the top of the market etc um, as you would whatever your normal approach is um, but adding some kind of element of hot form uh, i think is useful and always useful context um, and the race which uh, kind of got my attention um, was this Sandown race, which gave some indication. If you look at his uh, kind of debut, the fact that most of his races have produced winners, um, and which is never a bad thing, but it was this Sandown race which I wanted uh, to just touch on in terms of bringing hot form to life and how you can kind of use it in analysis. Um, now, Global Storm is now two from two, but he was one from one here. Um, but you can see how this race worked out with the horse in sixth, 7th, 8th, ninth uh, have all won since. Um, uh, global Storm, and so you've got horses in behind uh, that have won. This is obviously a novice stake. So then you can you can obviously look at each of those horses and see the level that they performed in that winning run, if you so wanted. And actually, if I click this future form, which I will do in a moment, that will highlight that. Um, what I knew at the time, because I've been watching the racing, obviously, was Miss Yoda for John Gosden, who beat Global Storm here, not by far, a couple of lengths, um, returned on the 5th of June 
and won the Lingfield Oaks trial uh, and would go on to, uh, well, is going to go and run in the Oaks, off a rating of 102. Um, so we knew, or I knew, looking at this global storm, his rating today, 87. He bumped into a horse there and didn't get beaten by far by one of the handicapper setters being 102 at the time, who'd since gone and won that trial. Um, this new market race, he'd run on heavy, obviously had course form. Uh, this one hadn't worked out so well. Um, uh, Global Storm, that win is the win we're talking about on Sunday. But it's good to laugh, hasn't run since. So we may want to note it's good to laugh down for the future. Um, you can see some of these haven't run very many times uh, or done much, but again, you're just trying to build up a picture, and he won that by two lengths uh, of the general level of form. So, yeah, you've got that Sandown race here. I can use GG's to look on the future form, and I can look at all of their runs since uh, and try and build up a picture uh, of how they did. You see uh, Dogged for David Ellsworth, who actually competed in this race as well, so they were closely tied. Um, but he won his next start off 18, got to 85. Uh, there's Global Storm uh, and various different others. You can look down here. Uh, those that have kind of competed and performed. So if you're racing in a race which has produced subsequent winners, um, that's always a good thing, I think. But yeah, how you use that then in any analysis uh, is a different question. But yes, an important part of the puzzle for me and understanding the horses you're looking at. Of course, uh, flat racing can be kind of hot form on steroids as the <laughs> as the racing builds up. There's crossing over all over the place, but it, it's... It's important, I think, uh, and useful, I should say, um, to use how you please. But that's one example of a very hot race. Um, I should just click on that while I'm here, actually, uh, and just see if there's anything um, which hasn't run yet. There was, wasn't there? Um, that should go in the notebook, and that would be, well, a couple, actually, because Roger Charlton has only won, run once, so Campari, who's only won once, and given how this race is working out, Ran at Kent in October, I assume still in training, but we can find that out. So that might be one to add to the notebook and you can know for the future how well uh, this race has worked out. And then we've got Andrew Boldings, uh, Cadu Dor, uh, here um, and he's yet to run since. Only one run in September. Uh, it'll be interesting uh, to find out more about uh, him and what his plans were. Now, of course, uh, again, this is why seeing... I should say this is a two-year-old novice and obviously horses can develop at a different rate from age two to three uh, and until you actually see them on the racetrack arguably or obviously you're the trainer or connections uh, you don't fully know how they're uh, developed and that's what makes I suppose three-year-old handicaps uh, trickier especially when most of them are unraced this season in the early weeks of the season um, but yeah until they reappear you don't know how they've developed so, so always some caution from kind of novice form but that's why seeing form this season and Miss Yoda, as a three-year-old, has franked that form. Um, so Cadu Dor, who's only kind of raced once, uh, possibly a late maturing type, still doing some growing, hopefully still in training, um, is an interesting one there, as is Roger Charlton's, given uh, that form we've just discussed there. So there's some hot form that I will be adding uh, to my own notebook, and I should think I'll do a bit more research, but I'd be surprised if I don't chuck those two in, my horses to follow under the hot form tab, and we can track them for their next three starts and see how well they did. Um, in general, this might be a race. Uh, you can kind of track races, and if I jump over to uh, horse race base, so that's an example of what I mean by hot form, and hopefully uh, that makes sense. Um, races that have worked out well, looking at, uh, no, it's not just, races that have produced winners you want to see the level of performance that uh, those horses are then competing in um, and whether that indicates or gives you any useful information about the quality and the potential of the horse you're now looking at um, but if you are running in a race which is producing loads of winners and is clearly was clearly very competitive um, of course there's a chance they may be running in a race today which is less competitive which is one element but also giving us information about their handicap mark so that is um, GG's. Now I am in horse race base, uh, which I kind of use to go through uh, some historical races. Uh, so if I go on hot and cold races here, um, you can pick hot, running today, no, next couple of runs. I mean, you can do what you want with these. You can select the last 365 days if you want. Um, race category, I want flat. You can pick handicaps or non-handicaps. I'll just leave both. 
um, wins place runs minimum runs one um, so you can click go on that so you can do various different things there as you can see and that brings up a load of races over the last year um, you can see the runs wins places since some um, the uh, the maroon ones are races that I've clicked through and looked at and see if I could find any horses of note um, the uh, yeah, so, so in, in the blue ones I haven't. So this 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 novice stakes, I can just click this, and I'm kind of doing this live. Um, oh, well, there we go. That <laughs> that's the race I was just discussing. Um, I hadn't obviously done this in a few days, but this race has obviously developed since. Uh, like I said, this is another way of looking at how the race developed. This is within horse race space. You can see the level of form. Uh, you can get a snapshot of the level of form that some of the horses have performed at. Um, you can see the overall stats here, 32 runners since, 12 wins, 15 places. Um, even this Cossa Orga down here is only run once since, in and around a load of winners. It uh, would be interesting if they're still in training and what mark they have in the context of what those in front may have done. Um, of course, you've got horses are performing to the level they are and may not have been suited by race conditions. Um, may not have been ready, may want further, etc. Um, so that's that. Uh, there's a race at Salisbury that I want to concentrate on, which I know I added a couple of horses from. I think it was from this one in September down here. Hopefully you can see. Let me move that up a bit. Um, if I click on that, uh, this is one interesting race. We've got Kenzai Warrior who pitched up in the guineas. Um, obviously blew the start and didn't run very well. There's Max Vega here um, for... Rafe Beckett, who has returned in June, uh, a non-handicap uh, in a Group 3, but he won a Group 3 after winning, or second in that Salisbury race, then he won at Pontefract, then he won a Group 3. Um, and you can see here a couple of horses. You've got Shandu, so we can see what he's done since. Um, he won a novice race, so that's, you know, giving some context that horses had ability in here. And you can use that, and you'll see there's two horses that haven't run since. Uh, you've got uh, Mambo Knights, who I've, you know, I've added some notes there, so I can add notes, I can add them, I can track them. Um, I've put must be chucked in off 87 as some kind of note, possibly. That's because of looking at uh, what Max Vega's done and the mark uh, you know, he's, he came into this Kempton return uh, with a rating of 110, having won that Group 3. Um, so you can, yeah, you can get a feel for uh, the level of form that Mambo Knights may be able to achieve off a mark of 87. Uh, Shandu is frankly there, and you've got uh, Sea Trout Reach um, for uh, William Haggis. Um, again, I've, I've checked uh, Mark Howard's book. Um, was it Mark Howard's that I've got in front of me? Yeah. Uh, and Sea Trout Reach gets a positive mention. Um, yeah, comment in Mark Howard's book there. He's got races in him for sure. Uh, I think Haggis, or well, he's still in training. I was kind of looking to see he hadn't been sold or was still in the UK. Um, uh, so he may have strengthened up. It might be he wants further, but beaten four lengths in a race which is very hot and is working out very well. Um, and yeah, Mambo Knights as well, like I touched on. Uh, that's one um, for Richard Hannon that might be interesting also. Um, and so I suppose that's the process. I'm ticking around the 15 minutes. So I could keep going on. And you, so using horse race space, I've touched on how you can use GGs and the race cards. They also have a hot form report, um, a daily report. So let me just find that. Um, where are we? So yeah, you can kind of go to this hot form report here uh, and you can do various different things. Obviously not much in the last 35 days. If we go to 90, um, uh, you can kind of look at some of these races and how they've worked out. Uh, so uh, this one, yeah, Dark Vader uh, won and uh, in a race has produced winners, but you can just dig in. Obviously as the season goes on, these reports build up more as will the number of horses that populate uh, my uh, various different daily blog posts for the horse to follow section but this is just an idea uh, so that's the Gigi's daily and then you can look tomorrow if there's any similar look 90 days you can order by wins uh, so you can have a look and this is all about just building up a profile uh, and a bigger a building up the picture I should say really of what a horse has achieved and what they may be capable of um, and I, I really enjoy this kind of research. Uh, you can put some music on, do whatever, and go through race by race. And when you get to something like that Salisbury race, um, 
it sounds quite sad really but I suppose I, I am um, <laughs> when it comes to this kind of thing uh, but I enjoy uh, kind of doing that investigation I suppose and then you see a race like that Salisbury race and go oh uh, look at what they've achieved and oh we've got horses that haven't run since and it will be useful to know uh, when these horses return uh, with some notes off the top of my head without having to do too much digging the level of a form they've already achieved and that's a way in and it helps build the picture and then you can look at various other factors trainer form etc etc uh, and like i said whatever else you use to analyze so that's how you can use horse race base to find hot races um, and you just go through them until you you find horses that haven't run or that may run once um, there's various different ways you can do it and you can see this big list here of races that i'm yet to click on and yet to go through which i was going to do for a couple of hours today um i might not get through them all um but that was uh, part of what i was going to do so um hopefully that uh is enlightening to a point i've highlighted uh, kind of four horses there we can keep an eye on uh linked to those uh, races touched on here um Campari, like I said, Cadu Dorf, Andrew Boarding, hopefully you can see the reasons why. Uh, they were clearly running in a race with some uh, well handicapped, well, sorry, a race with horses that would go on to or have gone on to achieve some decent ratings so far and may continue to progress. Uh, so as a novice stakes at Sandown, this one looks to be decent and worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and I've looked at this race here, um, from Salisbury and there's a couple of horses in that that have yet to run and you can see that in and around winners uh, one of which was got a rating of 110 after winning a group three uh, so that might give some hope that Mambo Knights off 87 Sea Trout Reach whenever he gets a mark uh, that that mark may be workable um, and of course uh, they're with a couple of decent trainers in William Haggis and Richard Hannon. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'm in danger of just repeating myself, aren't I? Uh, hopefully that video, um, this Tracker Tuesday video on the 9th of June uh, has um, added something uh, to your experience of horse racing, which is of course the aim, hopefully positive. Um, but yeah, those four horses will appear in the daily blog posts and horses to follow at some point, and I've got much more digging to do. Um, so with that said, as I tick round to 18 minutes, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and until the next time, this is Josh saying bye for now.